I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on lines. We'll begin with coordinate planes. Consider this paper itself. We'll call this as our XY plane and we'll kind of say that everything on this XY plane can be located with the help of our coordinate system which is a rectangular or Cartesian coordinate system. So we'll try to understand what this coordinate system is and then we'll take up 10 review questions. I'll also provide you with some test questions on the side. There are links which are related with the topic we are talking about. You can explore those links and understand more about its applications. Perfect. So to begin with, this particular plane, when I draw two lines, a horizontal and a vertical, and then I will normally label the horizontal line as X, vertical as Y. That means that this side going towards right is positive, up is positive. On the left side, it is again X but with a negative value and here will represent Y with a negative value. And that point here, which is the intersection of X and Y, is called origin. And the coordinates for this particular point will always be 0, 0. Got it. Now, any point in our plane can be represented by ordered pairs. So, there are ordered pairs. Which will be written as, let's say, A, B. Where A and B belongs to set of real numbers, right? So these ordered pairs will be always written in the parenthesis as shown here, correct? Now remember, A, B is very specific. When I say A, B, in that case, A is the distance from origin along the x-axis. So that is the position A. And then B is the distance along the y-axis, right? So this is B. And the position here of a point will now be written as A, comma B. So that gives you relative position from the origin. You get the concept. Normally, we'll refer this, we'll give it a name, and that name will be written in a capital letter, for example, P. So a point P has a location in our system, A, comma B, where X is the horizontal distance from the origin, and B is the vertical distance from the origin, right? So, so that is how each and every point will be defined. Now you can also notice that coordinates of point A and B will be positive and positive in this particular part, which we call as quadrant 1. So this is called quadrant 1. In fact, these two lines divide the whole plane into four quadrants, right? So, and we name them like this, quadrant 1 quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. Correct? So as we were talking about these points A and B, the value of A, which is along the x-axis, will be negative here, but along the y-axis will be positive in quadrant 2. In quadrant 3, both will be negative and in quadrant 4, the x value as you can see is positive and y value is negative, right? So that is how our points A and B will be. Now there are other names which are given to all these things. A and B, for example, we also call them as the x coordinate. So A in our case will also be treated as the x-coordinate 
and at times we also refer it by the name of abscissa right so these are names which you will often see in the text b could be written as a y coordinate or it is called ordinate right so these are some names and the key words which you will come across when we talk about a coordinate plane now if i have a point let us say if i have a point which is like minus it is if it is on this side minus let's say minus 2 and 1 it really means that the point is in quadrant 2 it is two units left and one unit up right so that is the point which we are talking about however if i write a point which is let us say 5 2 then that really means 5 and minus 2 let's say because i've written here that really means you move five units along the x-axis and two down so you get 5 minus 2. so given the coordinates of a point we can actually figure out in which quadrant the point is now in some of the questions we can ask you where will this point lie this point for me is the point which is let us say minus 5 0 now this point which is on the x-axis does not lie on any of these quadrants it lies on the axis similarly a point on the y-axis does not lie on any quadrant and generally any point on the y-axis will have a zero value for x right and some value for y since it is negative let me write this as negative 4 for example that makes sense correct so what you've learned here is that any plane could be represented by a system which we are calling as a rectangular or a Cartesian coordinate system. Every point on this plane could be referred to as an ordered pair where A gives you distance from the origin to along the x-axis, B gives you distance along the y-axis. Origin is a point where x-axis and y-axis intersect and the ordered pair representing the origin will always be zero zero correct these two lines divide the whole plane into four quadrants in quadrant two will have negative values for a and positive values for b a and b are real numbers where a is representing the x coordinate or abscissa and b represents the y coordinate or ordinate value perfect so with that now let us take up 10 review questions right so this is all you need to know about a coordinate system to get into two units one coordinate geometry the other one about lines right so this is a common chapter and i hope this information is good enough to understand concepts about coordinate geometry and about lines okay so let's move on and take these 10 questions now now here are 10 questions for you we'll have eight multiple choice questions and two open questions answering these questions will ensure that you have understood the topic and you're ready to move forward so let's first look into these questions and then we'll take up their solution question number one if the ordered pair 3 comma p equals to q minus 2 then p plus q is what four choices are given to you similarly question 2 is for the ordered pair 2 3 you are given choices three choices basically to understand what is 2 and what is 3 representing in an ordered pair question number 3 is the intersecting points between x-axis and the y-axis is what Question number four, the coordinates of any point on the y-axis is what? Question number five, equation of x-axis is what? 
Question number six. The point two minus three lies in which quadrant? Question number seven. If the point PQ lies in quadrant four, then minus PQ will lie in which quadrant? Question number eight. Which of the following points does not lie in any quadrant? And then we have two questions here, which are not multiple choice. So you need to explain your answer in these two questions. Question number nine here is, consider any ordered pair AB and C equals to A plus B. Represent C greater than zero on the XY plane. Question number 10 is, Consider any order pair A comma B and C equals to A minus B. Represent C equals to zero on the XY plane. So now I'd like you to take your time, understand the concepts, answer these questions and then look into my suggestions. Perfect. Now back to our question number one and then we'll answer them in no time. Question number one. If ordered pair 3 comma p equals to q comma minus 2, then p and p plus q is what? So if the two ordered pairs are same, right, that really means that their x values and their y values are exactly same, right? So from here, we know q is equal to 3 and p is equal to minus 2. We want to know what is p plus q. So let's add. 3 and minus 2 to get our result which is 1 and so option B is the correct option. Correct. For the ordered pair 2, 3, now the first value which is the x coordinate is called abscissa and the second value which is the y coordinate is called the ordinate. So the ordinate is 3 is the correct answer. Perfect. Question number 3. The intersection points between x-axis and y-axis is always the origin. So 0, 0 is the right answer. Clear? Question number 4. The coordinates of any point on the y-axis, the x value has to be 0, right? So option C is the right option. Perfect. So I hope you got all the concepts clear. Perfect. Okay. Now let's move on and see solutions for 5, 6, 7, and 8. Now 5, equation of x-axis is what? Let's look into this. This is a very important question. Many times students are getting confused about it. So we're talking about this axis, x-axis, correct? That is the origin. This is the x-axis which we are talking about, right? This line. So you notice that along the x-axis, y value is 0. And therefore, the answer is C, y equals to 0. So that is the equation of x-axis. Is that clear? Right? Question number 6 is, the point 2 minus 3 lies in which quadrant? Well, 2 is positive, 3 is negative. So it lies here, which is our quadrant number 4. So the answer is D. Perfect. Question number 7. If the point PQ lies in quadrant 4, that means if the point is in quadrant 4, which is PQ, then minus PQ will lie in what? Minus P means earlier the value of P was positive, right? So minus P, but Q is same as what it was. So that will now lie here, right? In quadrant 3. So that's a tricky question. So you have to kind of visualize or answer as I have shown you on the quadrants, right? So as we are moving forward, we are actually looking into some very intricate and interesting questions. Question number eight, which of the following points does not lie on any quadrant? So any point which is there on the axis does not lie in any quadrant. So let's look into the points. Well, wherever we have one of these as zeros will be the point for us, correct? Okay? So A is correct. This point 0, 1 basically lies on the y-axis, correct? It is not in any quadrant. Is that clear to you? Perfect. Let's see how to answer question number 9 and 10. Question number 9 here is consider any ordered pair AB and C equals to A plus B. 
okay replace represent c greater than 0 on the xy plane so this is our xy plane so when we say xy plane the best way is to form our rectangular coordinate system or sometimes as we call Cartesian coordinate system correct so this is the origin for us and that's what it is what are we looking for we are looking for C greater than 0 that means the sum of x coordinate value and y coordinate value is greater than 0 okay now normally we'll represent a is this these are a and this is b right on the y-axis so how can we solve this well we could write b as greater than negative value of a okay how does that help well this is slightly early to answer but anyway if you look into this you will realize that when we are saying that the y value is greater than the negative of a value it really means we can look into what is b equal to minus a right so so we are saying if i write a as one then b is minus one right so one and one will be here if i say a is negative one then b will be positive one if i say a is zero then there will be zero so that means we are talking about this particular line do you get this line so this line is basically where b value is equal to minus of a value but what do we need we need to answer this question which says b is greater than minus a that means we're talking about everything which is above this line does it make sense to you so that is a high level question on this topic now question number 10 Consider any ordered pair a, b and c equals to a minus b this time, okay, represent c equals to 0 on x, y plane. So again, let's again draw this, right, x, y plane for us. Now in this case, we are given what? We are saying c is a minus b and c equals to 0. That means a minus b equals to 0 or a is equal to b. Well, a is your x coordinate and b is your y coordinate a equals to b means what points like like 1 1 right 2 2 these that is a equals to b right even minus 1 minus 1 so that means we're talking about all the points which are on this diagonal so when we say a equals to b we are talking about every point on this particular line which is diagonally bisecting our coordinate plane into two equal halves so that becomes the x-axis this is the y-axis that's zero and the green line shown here represents c equals to zero where c is a minus b does it make sense to you so i hope with this all the concepts about coordinate planes are absolutely clear the whole idea of this series is to provide you with just the right information in no time so if you're going through my series on all these topics you will be actually learning exactly what you need to know on a particular topic now based on your learnings we will have on the side some links which will give you test papers and more review questions on the same topic topic to you know master the techniques that kind of thing so i hope you understand and appreciate our approach feel free to write your comment share your views and if you like and subscribe to our videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.